But corporate wokeism is a trend that has long since come to these shores. Just this week, Waitrose spotted encouraging shoppers to swap our meat for vegetables in order to reduce our carbon footprint. And remember this, diversity managers at Marks & Spencer rolling out badges for staff with their preferred pronouns to avoid misgendering. Well, to discuss this now, I'm delighted to be joined by the columnist and best-selling author of We Need to Talk About, Kevin Lionel Shriver. And Lionel, look, this is something I know that you have seen in the publishing world for a long time. But why do corporates keep doing this when it doesn't actually look like the public want it? Well, what's bizarre about the whole trend is that it's not in the interest of making money. That's what makes it so baffling. Yeah. If uh, Anheuser-Busch were intelligently appealing to uh, a whole new demographic and we're going to expand the market for Bud Light, that would be one thing, but they're especially focusing this kind of campaign uh, with Dylan Mulvaney on Gen Z. Well, they were born after 2000. And most of those people, I mean, the drinking age in the U.S. is 21. Most of those people can't even drink yet. So it's it's so wrongheaded. I mean, the same, as you know, the same thing has happened in the publishing industry. Uh, all they seem to care about is uh, uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion, and not selling books that people want to buy. And that's what's so baffling about this whole mm. trend. I can see why products, you know, and in marketing people, I mean, they're very alert to trends, to they want to be with it. Uh, uh, and uh, that's clearly an, an ingredient. But they also should want to make money. That's the whole purpose of marketing, to sell more of your product. And this, this, this turned into a much bigger story than I, I would ever have imagined possible. It's all over the New York well, But Post. don't you think it's just so representative, though, of where we're at? Because yeah. as you say, companies don't actually seem to care about making money. They just want to move up the ranks of the social responsibility tables run by organisations like Stonewall. Uh, and then you have Dylan Mulvaney uh, himself. And, and you've actually described him in a, a brilliant column in The Spectator as a calculating opportunist. As a woman, do you feel offended by the Dylan Mulvaney shtick? Because basically, as far as I can tell, he actually seems to mock what it is to be a woman. It's like performative being a bimbo. To him, that's what it is to be a woman. So I don't understand why brands would want to get on board with that if they're trying to attract female customers. I'm a little torn on this because on the one hand, yeah, it's totally offensive. It is a drastic stereotype of what it is to be a female. And, and even in 1950s terms, you know, uh, he talks about crying all the time. He prances around. He's obviously incredibly weak physically, uh, his the way he moves his body is prissy and 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 basically pathetic. His whole thing is pathetic. Um, but on the other hand, it comes it comes across to me as a piss take. I mean, he's it's it's almost like he's taking the Mickey. And it, as I noted in the column, if I had if I didn't know who this guy was, and I looked at one of these videos innocently, I would have thought that he was taking the mickey out of both uh, sexual stereotypes and transgenderism. That this, this, this is a satire. That's the way it comes across. Yeah, exactly. It's a spoof. Uh, can I just ask you, Lionel, about the whole pronoun thing? Because obviously you are a brilliant writer. And I picked up the fact that in your spectator column, uh, you did make a little reference to the fact that you weren't going to buy into this whole, because you know Dylan Mulvaney asks to be called she, they. Sam Smith asks to be called they, them. Uh, you refer to uh, Dylan Mulvaney as a he. You've, you've done so tonight. You know, for a lot of companies now, that would be a cancelable offence. And actually, a lot of news organisations now are rewriting folks' column if they misgender the protagonist that they're writing about. Yes, and uh, I noticed you had a, a section uh, uh, on uh, the police before I was on. And mm. um, yeah, I, maybe we've just 
uh, committed a terrible offense and the cops are going to show up at my door any minute now. But I'm, I'm, uh, I'm really tired of the compliance of the media on this point. Dylan Mulvaney is male and uh, it seems pretty conspicuous that he's a gay male. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, he, he claimed to be gay before yes. he decided he was gender instead. He's a camp gay bloke, and, right? And you even have the likes of the Daily Telegraph uh, getting with the program and even with these, um, you know, these s sex offenders who claim to be whim women to get into women's prisons and rape women. Uh, even the Daily Telegraph will duly call them she. Mm. And I feel as if we're all being manipulated, that we're in some ways we are being mocked and we're showing no spine. It is ultimately what Jordan Peterson calls compelled speech. And I should have the uh, I should have the the freedom of of speech to be able to call Dylan Mulvaney a boy. Well, indeed. And also uh, it's actually a biological fact. Your, your stating mm -hmm. a fact, you know, Dylan Mulvaney hasn't undergone any surgery, no hormone treatment, nothing. So you were stating a complete biological fact, but you know, these days well, it's, it's, it, you can't. It's pandering. It is.